So hello everyone, welcome to Pediatrics by Dr. Anand. Today's topic of choice was very important infectious disease, and we have covered the top hundred questions which can come in AIMS, NEET, PG, as well as PGI, which are very important and and at the same time very basic questions, very basic questions. So we'll try to understand the questions and try to get best answers possible. Okay, so question number one. So a three-year-old boy, a three-year-old boy presents with four-day history of cough. Coryzal symptoms and non-purulent conjunctivitis. So obviously, this only the first question, the first line only I have told you the answer. You all know that. Remember C, C, and C. Okay. Once again, I'll just uh, delete my WhatsApp. Okay. So yeah. So you already know the answer. Very important. So the anyone who comes with cough, coryza, and conjunctivitis, these are the three important Cs for the. Measles, right? So very good. So very good. Cup coryza and conjunctivitis straight away. And very importantly, see whatever I am speaking right now. So we're gonna cover very variety of separate, uh, uh, different questions also. So non-purulent conjunctivitis. I have specifically mentioned very important. Remember, so cup coryza and conjunctivitis in general comes in the measles. But always remember one more point. Uh, measles in general has a purulent conjunctivitis. In general, I'm talking about measles have purulent conjunctivitis, whereas Kawasaki, Kawasaki disease has non-purulent conjunctivitis. Listen to me carefully, okay? Measles, the patient comes with cough, coryza, and conjunctivitis. What kind of conjunctivitis in general you see in measles? So the answer is very important. The in measles in general, you see the purulent conjunctivitis. Even though I have written in the question that the child is having non-purulent conjunctivitis, it was just to you know confuse you. So just remember one thing: in measles in general, you see the purulent conjunctivitis, whereas Kawasaki, Kawasaki, you see the non-purulent conjunctivitis. Please remember that. Okay. Okay. In general, I'm talking about. Kawasaki, you see non-purulent conjunctivitis, whereas in measles, you see purulent conjunctivitis. Purulent means a uh, purulent means pus forming. Pus forming means in general, you know, like the sticky sticky discharge will come. Okay, remember in measles you see that even though I uh, put the question as non-purulent conjunctivitis, it was just to confuse you because in our best options, correct, the answer is measles only. He then develops a high-grade fever with maculopapular rash, which starts behind the ears. Spread to the face and trunk and lower limbs. It's like I'm telling the whole story only regarding measles. So measles only is behind the rash and face and trunk and maculopapular. It usually does not involve the palms and soles. Very less likely it involves the palms and soles. That you should know. Okay. So this question, just remember the answer is measles. But in general, you should know in measles you see purulent conjunctivitis. Means little sticky sticky discharge will come in the eyes. From the eyes, whereas Kawasaki, you see non-purulent conjunctivitis. So this word was just to confuse you in the question. Question number two, the other name of rubella. So we all know that the other name of rubella is nothing but yes, it is measles only. The other name of rubella is nothing but measles. That also you should know. Okay, question number three, measles is caused by yeah. So it's very basic question. So Rishab, very good. So measles, we all know that in general it is caused by nothing but a RNA virus. Remember one thing: measles is also caused by a RNA virus. Even mumps is also caused by a RNA virus. Okay. Whereas varicella, chicken pox, varicella is nothing but chicken pox. It is caused by a DNA virus. Okay. That again, straight away simple, very simple question. But yet, I think so many have done mistake in this also. I don't know why. So you should know. Okay. So I'll repeat again: measles in general, it is a because of the caused by RNA virus. Mumps also, it is RNA virus, whereas Kawasa, whereas the varicella or chicken pox, it is because of the DNA virus. Okay, that you should know. Okay, so question number two, the answer is A. Question number three, also the answer is B. Measles caused by a RNA virus. Which family does measles belong to? Any idea? Anyone you put, you can put in the answer in the comment section. Which family does measles belong to? Okay, so yes, very good, very good, Ramya. So yes, measles, the family it belongs to the paramyxovirus. Okay. Measles, the it generals the family sitting, but paramyxovirus. Okay, very good. Medico underscore one two nine seven and uh, very good. Okay, 
what is the period of communicability of measles see this question 95% i have made from opg because opg has given very good regarding the coverage of infectious disease is that much also you do most of the need pg questions are already covered okay so period of communicability of measles yes we all know that the period of communicability of measles according to fuse book the textbook of pediatrics or according to opg it is just only 4 days before and 5 days after the rash remember measles measles this class is very important measles what comes to your mind like behind the ear the rash will come then face then trunk then body you will see coplic spots also over the buccal mucosa right measles measles cuff coryza conjunctivitis this also triple c so the period of yeah so this session yes this session is getting recorded yeah it is getting recorded but it will not directly go to the youtube after one to two weeks it will go to the youtube and it will also go to our med miracle channel also our app where you can access it okay so that's a period of communicability of measles is uh, four days before and five days after the rash true or false measles is highly contagious disease with secondary attack rate exceeding almost 90% so yes that's very well true that is very good dr rangu sharma sushma very nice yeah it is a straight away question it is highly measles mumps all chicken pox these all are very contagious if i am having i can you know <coughs> i can cough it and droplet or i can spread you very nicely so it is a very highly contagious disease and its secondary attack rate is also very high that is very true okay uh, yeah question number 6 true is the best answer incubation period of measles so yeah question number 7 very nice the incubation period of measles in general yes dr simran is right shweta is also very right 10 days very good very good try to understand okay try to understand so very good divya remember measles incubation period is 10 days and very important uh, this varicella anyone varicella incubation period so varicella incubation period is around 10 to 21 days very good swati very good okay at the same time mumps mumps incubation period anyone mumps incubation period nothing but 2 to 4 weeks okay very good swati very good okay 2 to 4 weeks opg has given enough questions to make it a quiz and enough questions for you to come for aims and neat pg but at the same time we have covered the pius gupta textbook of pediatrics also for making the question a bit of level okay so very true three major questions uh, incubation period means when the virus enters in my body and then when i show the symptom that period is incubation period once the virus enters in my body and the time i show the symptoms like cough for either conjunctive itis or whatever so that is known as incubation period so incubation period of measles it is 10 days whereas uh, what is called uh, uh, this mumps it is 2 to 4 weeks and whereas at the same time varicella is nothing but uh, what is called 10 to 21 days that you should know okay question number 8 true or false yeah very nice question the reason uh, uh pdf of piyush gupta yeah i have the pdf of piyush gupta luckily we got it uh, recently i will give you the pdf of piyush gupta theek hai okay mm. perfect yeah okay uh, so uh, the reason for giving measles that's very true the reason for giving measles vaccine at 9 months of life the reason for that is that only because infants are protected by you know uh, plus trans placental antibodies which decline by 9 months it's a very straight away final year mbbs external examiner question that he had asked me why don't you give a vaccine mmr or mr vaccine at 5 months 4 months why you only give 9 months or after 9 months so the reason for giving that vaccine is that only because infants are protected by the trans placental antibody which comes from the mother so basically that is the reason and by 9 months it start declining so that is the time i should give the vaccine okay so that is a true and false okay uh, partially true and partially false like most of the questions are usually straight away true and false because this time i had put the quiz on the on our med miracle app so it has to it has four options true or false other two options are empty i had to put something so just partially true and partially false i had put it but all the uh, this points are straight away true or straight away false in general measles is a kill vaccine so what do you think measles is a kill vaccine or a live vaccine so yes it is a very important it is a false statement your measles is not a field vaccine it is a live vaccine very good divya very good nokia very good mohini rator so measles very important measles it is a live vaccine can anyone name me any other live vaccine any idea i don't remember can anyone tell me any other live vaccine if you are aware of very good shweta very good it is vcg you know uh, you can say mmr is the live okay you can say rota virus is live you know rota virus or you can say small pox is also live and we have a mnemonic also but this much more than enough okay so bcg mmr see whatever questions come what is the 
what is the thought process of this webinar the thought process is that only that we try to you know gather little information and try to make it sediment in our brains you know that you should know okay uh, okay so mnemonic bro mnemonic is very long because of small chicken okay if you want to know the mnemonic i'll just show you one slide okay if you're that much keen as a good student let me show you one slide and it has the mnemonic okay i'll just show you give me one second so in general you should know that uh, small pox chicken pox varicella uh, you know bcg these all are very uh, these all are uh, what do you call live vaccines i'll just show you one second the mnemonic of the uh, this one if you are if you want to know give me one second that's a buffer yeah so this is the mnemonic i can't write the whole mnemonic uh, you can just listen to it so the mnemonic was you can read this uh, uh, because of rain yesterday i i took more small chicken meal okay it's a very long mnemonic itself so i i didn't learn it i just wrote it uh, if anyone wants to learn it can learn it so the types of live vaccine we have the mnemonic the mnemonic is because of rain yesterday i took more small chicken meal okay now how the mnemonic goes basically this is the the way the mnemonic goes that because of rain yesterday b for bcg okay because of rain yesterday r for rubella okay b for bcg r for rubella because of rain yesterday yesterday is yellow fever okay because of rain yesterday i i for influenza okay before uh, what do you called uh, because of rain yesterday i took sorry i took t for typhoid okay and then okay uh, i took more small chicken meal m for mumps o for opv r for rotavirus e for epidemic typhus okay and i took more small chicken meal small chicken meal meal means small pox chicken pox and meal for measles so these all are the examples of live vaccine because of rain yesterday i took more small chicken meal bcg rubella yellow fever influenza typhoid mumps opv rotavirus epidemic typhus small pox chicken pox and measles okay so oh, i hope you got it okay fine yeah there are yes what is right typhoid is a conjugate vaccine also but in general epidemic typhus typhoid they comes in live also many vaccines they are subunit they are live also they are killed also don't worry this is the best explanation i can give you for the examples of the live vaccine now coming to the next question question number 9 question number 10 okay what are these spots what do you think any idea what do you call it this is nothing but we all even my grandmother knows this answer this is nothing but coplic spots okay these are very beautiful very pretty nice sand with a little reddishness you know so this is nothing but coplic spots coplic spot it is seen in measles very good okay where do you see nagayama spot any idea nagayama spot where do you see nagayama spot any idea yeah very good so nagayama spot you see in roseola infantum okay very good so nagayama spot you see in roseola infantum these are straight away straight away questions where nagayama spot is seen in dash like that straight away questions which comes in aims also as well as in neat pg also so this is coplic spot it is a pathognomonic uh, feature seen in measles sub coriza conjunctivitis measles okay yeah the spot shown question number 11 the spot shown in the image below are white grains and uh, this only are, are white grains of sand like lesions with surrounding erythema this is the definition of of a coplic spot i have made the quiz with lot of uh, thought process that this quiz which should not be just question answer this is almost like you know telling me the detail also the question number 10 is coplic spot and question number 11 is the is the definition of coplic spots that coplic spots are nothing but this only white grains of sand like lesions with the surrounding erythema which is opposite to the second molar on the buccal mucosa very good swati very good rangu very beautiful answer so this is nothing but straight away even examiner ask you in mbbs as well as in md if you get admission in pediatrics define define what are coplic spots so sir some some spots sir so no you shouldn't say that they are the white grains of sand like lesion with surrounding erythema against the second molar on the buccal mucosa nothing but coplic spots seen in uh, measles done okay the rash of measles usually appear on the fourth day with a rise in fever as faint reddish macules behind the tongue so it is a true statement or it is a false statement so again remember naturally it is behind the ear not behind the tongue okay in general it is not some student of my dear student she was telling it is partially false or partially true no we will only take you know like again swati i think you only had said in the whatsapp i guess so we'll just keep it as if like this see this rash is faint reddish macules behind the tongue behind the tongue 
it, it's not if it was a partially true statement the nelson textbook of pediatrics definitely would have mentioned about it they have straight away told the rash is behind the ear then fades and trunk and this and that and that only was my thought process so this statement in general i can say it is false okay so don't mind if uh, i offend you some way so match the following according to the fever with rash so yeah this everyone knows obviously fever with rash so you know that uh, fever with rash on day 1 is nothing but you see in chicken pox you remember fever with rash on day 7 you see in enteric fever hai na you know that right fever with rash on day 4 you see in measles fever with rash on day 2 it is seen in scarlet fever yes or no fever, fever with rash on day 3 is nothing but small pox theek hai i think you know all these conditions so fever with rash fever with rash very good so we have wonderful i don't know your name azila say okay so yeah she has told wonderfully fever with rash if i am having fever today then on with today only fever i have got a rash I think I am suffering from chicken pox. Nothing but very silly. Fever with rash on day two is scarlet fever. You should think of where you see strawberry tongue and whitish tongue. Scarlet fever. Strawberry tongue, which is seen in Kawasaki, as as well as it is seen in scarlet fever also. Okay, but in scarlet, it is strawberry plus little whitish also. Day three fever with rash on day three. Definitely, you should think of smallpox. Fever with rash on day four, you should think of measles. This measles is a good answer. Very quiet. Oh, very good. Or day five, definitely it is typhus. You know that. Okay, typhus. And day six is nothing but dengue fever. And fever with rash on day seven is nothing but enteric fever or typhoid fever. So that is why these are the very important. Again, every question is very prime, very nice, very straight away one line kind of a question, which is important for you to for a clinical practice also and in general also you should know. Okay, that's it done. So that is why my best answer is this only question number thirteen. The answer was B. You already have the PDF. Every one of you, you can mark it. Question number fourteen. Question number fourteen and question number fifteen are straight away OP three lines. Straight away lines ninth edition. What is modified measles and what is hemorrhagic measles? So modified measles, it is seen in partially immune individuals. Modified measles, in general, it is seen in partially. It is seen in partially immune individuals, and it is what? And it is uh, it's a little of milder illness, you know, milder illness, and uh, yeah, and uh, it's the shorter duration. So it is straight away question uh, point comes in Pius Gupta as well as in the OP. So question number fourteen, the answer is true. Okay, question number fifteen also, the answer is very true. In hemorrhagic measles, measles you see cough, cough, rash, conjunctivitis, macular paper, rash, face involving, but less likely palms and soles. Remember that. So, but in hemorrhagic measles, you see the purpuric rash with bleeding also manifestations. You can see. So it is, it is fair away. It is fairly a true statement, I guess. Okay. Uh, this question number sixteen, seventeen, eighteen are are last five years repeated questions. I guess the most common complication. Yeah, Shweta is very right. Megha is also very right. The most common complication of measles is otitis media, and most common cause of death in measles is is nothing but pneumonia. Straight away, last five years, it is a repeated question again and again. Okay, so most common complication of measles is otitis media, and most common cause of death. In measles, is pneumonia. Question number sixteen. So the answer is B. And question number seventeen also. Most common cause of death in measles is nothing but pneumonia. And which is the most common late manifestation? The most common late manifestation. Divya, very right. Swati, Simran. So yes, the subacute sclerosing pan and cephalitis. Okay, very good, Ramya. Okay, Mohini, very good. So SSP is the late manifestation. You know. It is a late manifestation, very late, around seven years, ten years, twelve years uh, from the time I got measles. So it is a late manifestation. Straight away questions, neat PG, uh, very important for us to cover them. Okay, yeah, this is a good one. The rash of measles should be differentiated from the rash of rosyola in phantom and how? Okay, so you know that. Just now we told fever with rash on day four is nothing but measles, right? fever with rash on day 4 is measles right so remember as the fever also increases you get the rash but in rosyola in phantom what happens very important this point is in rosyola in phantom once the fever will subside then the rash will come this is a differentiating point of measles and rosyola in phantom i'll repeat again in in rosyola in phantom once the fever will subside 
then the rash will come whereas in measles it is not happening like that fever is also there rash is also there both are there and fever also increases with the rash whereas in roseola in phantom fever will come once it will subside and then the rash will come this is the most important differentiating point of roseola in phantom okay yeah that's straight away question okay check the image and tell how much dose should be given to a baby of more than 1 year of as a treatment of measles so yeah swati very good measles yeah this is nothing but very beautiful picture of my hospital vitamin a solution is nothing but vitamin a solution and it is already written also you know like vitamin a 1 lakh international units it's very important so yes so more than 1 year baby 2 lakh iu and less than 1 year baby 1 lakh iu so more than 2 year old baby or oh, sorry more than 1 year old baby it is 2 lakh international unit and less than one, this one it is it is 1 lakh international unit i if you want i'll write it less than 1 year and more than 1 year less than 1 year is 1 lakh international unit and more than 1 year it is 2 lakh international unit it's a straight away question you should know okay and this any extra point question number 20 let me check i had written extra points also and it is given two doses day 1 and day 2 only two doses are required in general it is given okay day 1 and day 2 okay vitamin a as a treatment of the measles two doses are given day 1 and day 2 yeah that's very good very right dr dilip beautifully you have written the answer identify question number 21 okay what is this any idea what is what do you call it what do you call this condition any idea what is this cells where do you see this 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 uh, this finding in very good swati so this is nothing but please write fusion of infected cells it is the fusion of the infected cells are you understanding it is the fusion of the infected cells basically which results in multi nucleated giant cells try to learn understand and study you will remember more multi nucleated giant cells and that only is known as this only the, the spelling i am i don't know spelling this is the spelling warthin finkelde giant cells okay i will repeat again so basically warthin finkelde giant cells they are the they are the fusion of the infected cells can you see it's a fusion right they are the fusion of the infected cells so they are the fusion of infected cells which results in multi nucleated you know so much nucleus is there so that results in multi nucleated giant cells it's known as warthin finkelde giant cells see in this This is also pathognomonic only. Complex words also, and uh, this Borkin Finkelde giant cells both are important, which is seen in measles. Okay, okay. Disease shown. Uh, very good, uh, 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 Swetha. Disease shown in the picture is caused by the Varicella zoster virus, which is a what? RNA virus or a DNA virus? What do you think? Any idea? So very important. Yes. So measles, RNA virus. Mumps, RNA virus. But chicken pox or Varicella, DNA virus. DNA virus. very important you should know okay uh, chicken pox or varicella dna virus and very important you should know one more thing also i told you chicken pox so chicken pox how do you know like if uh, you give me a call and telling dr anand there is a patient we have admitted i think he is a case of chicken pox so how do you know any idea can anyone help me how can you diagnose chicken pox like how can you how will you get to know about chicken pox okay megha we have ha huh. so dr rangu with, with the first answer fever with rash on day 1 okay number 1 the patient will have fever also the patient will have rash also now the question is what kind of rash is it a macular rash it is a maculo papular rash or it is a maculo papular vesicular rash so very good shweta very good simran so you know that it is nothing but it is a maculo papular vesicular rash vesicular what is vesicular can you see little watery watery thing is there can you see that little watery watery this is a very important point very good megha so maculo papular vesicular rash vesicular means water filled fluid filled discharge fluid is there basically like a very good shweta has come with a very beautiful answer dew drop appearance dew drop ka matlab kya hota in hindi we say na barish ki pehli boonde बारिश की बूंदें जब पत्ते पे गिरती हैं तो बूंदे बूंदे होती हैं वेन देर इज अ रेन फॉल वेन द रेन है लीफ ऑन द लीफ इट इज देयर 
that is looks like a due drop appearance and that only it is seen in chicken pox so chicken pox number one the patient will come to you that today only i've got a fever and today only i've got a rash that is the first point in general what are the other points you see very important so uh, this uh, macular papillar vesicular rash what is macule what is macule change in the color change in the color if there is only change in the color that is known as a macule if there is only change in color that is known as macule what is papule change in color plus little elevation also are you understanding if there is a change in color it is only macule okay if it is a what is the papule there is a change in color but there is elevation like i have a mole over here on my upper lip so there is a there is a change in color it is black but it has a little elevation also right so that is very important maculo papular uh, vesicular rash that you should know about chicken pox very good that's it and it's very important someone already told it's a polymorphous rash what is polymorphous rash like polymorphous means like you know all the stages of the rash are at one time all these stages of the rash are at one time means means what means sir it at one in my right hand i am having this little uh, this vesicle watery filled discharge dew drop or whatever you said and and on the left side i'm having what i'm having this macule papule other stages and later what will happen later this maculo papular vesicular rash later it will form crust okay later it will form crust like a black black scab blackish crust will form okay very important i have shown you or oh, i have tried my best to put all the images possible so there are images i've shown you with a guy with a chest and abdomen and black 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 marks are there so those are nothing but those the cycles have been crusted okay they have become little blackish okay so these also so one hand i will be seeing the blackish blackish crust and right hand i will be seeing macules papules the cycles in in various uh, groups and crops that is a polymorphous so all the stages which is the condition where all the stages of the rash are seen at the one time the answer is chicken pox so five six questions are already covered question number 23 disease shown in the picture is transmitted by air borne air uh, borne spread or through direct contact so yeah what is this yeah so this is very important it is very true so nishan is very right chicken pox measles mumps chicken pox all this condition droplet khansi cough uh, this all those things you know very important chicken pox only okay incubation period what is the incubation of period of uh, what you called uh, this condition what do you think so we have already discussed that incubation period very important so 10 to 21 days remember okay 10 to 21 days incubation period is 10 to 21 days of the chicken pox this previous slide only we have already covered question number 27 or 25 sorry what is the period of communicability so this can you see in this picture this is a very very beautiful picture of the image shown below is nothing but number one this image is of chicken pox that is the first point okay or nothing but very similar okay and can you see this very beautiful blackish blackish all black all crust 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 can you see that so these all are crust only which is there is seen in chicken pox so what is the period of communicability so yes very good ramya has gone with a very wonderful answer so 24 to 48 hours before the rash and until all the vesicles are crusted that is the period of communicability it's very important like this is a very important point okay like 24 to 48 hours before the rash until all the vesicles get crusted okay that is the whole is the period of communicability okay that's very important question one more question i had asked i don't know in this group i have asked or not that like for example my wife is pregnant and we are planning to visit you i think this i asked in my uh, telegram group yeah audio series so my wife is pregnant and me and my wife are planning to visit you okay but you are already uh, suffering from chicken pox so when should me and my wife should come and visit you so the answer is when all your vesicles which are watery fluid filled discharge this and that when all the vesicles get crusted like this shown in the picture the black 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 right and the new vesicles are not coming so that time i will feel the period of communicability of chicken pox is over now me and wife and my wife can come to visit you okay that is the period of communicability okay you have to learn by understanding by connecting it in real life you know then only things will sediment otherwise all theory theory knowledge will go off okay so question number 25 a is the best answer chicken pox is highly contagious in disease with secondary attack rate of 80% this is